<laughs> hey guys, welcome to Quarter Twins, Quarter Twins episode 17, Quarter Twins, the only Quarter Twins podcast, Quarter Twins, where two quarters make a dollar quarter, <laughs> Twins. Yes. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Today, we are talking about things that you do with your ears. We're listening <laughs> to things. We're hearing things. Yeah. It's all about the sense of hearing. You guys on the audio listeners are hype because there's nothing to show on the screen this week. That's right. And there could have been some music to play over the podcast, but um, copyright. It's yeah, a little bit copyright too... Copyright is an issue. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, we've compiled a playlist of songs for you guys to listen to uh, throughout the podcast, if you will. Mm. And uh, you can tune in to those songs when we talk about the songs. But I haven't even begun to explain yeah. <laughs> what we're doing. <laughs> I was about to say, you should tell them so what I'm, we're I'm doing. So, I'm getting a little, and tell getting them, a little bit ahead of myself. Tell them what we're not doing, because we said we were going to do something else this week. That is also true, <laughs> guys. Thank you so much for listening. I didn't yes. do that either. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, we love you guys. You're just so excited. The podcast. Ah, I can't wait. <laughs> this podcast has everything I could have ever wanted in it. Okay. Oh, wow. This is the greatest podcast. Okay. So last week we said we were gonna watch <laughs> Nope, the movie Jordan Peele's third movie, Nope. And uh, which came out in theaters today, Thursday the 21st, uh, which is a special day for Jordan. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sam and I got engaged two years ago today. Woo! So, okay. There you go. Um, Thanks for that shout awesome. out. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. And uh, so the movie comes out today. Well, we're recording the podcast today, and neither of us have seen the movie. So we're going to give you guys a chance to see the movie we're going to give ourselves a chance to mm. see the movie and do the episode on nope next week so what was next week's episode that we're now doing today <laughs> our favorite movie scores oh. that is what we're talking about yes. today now i've gone back to where i was previously we're talking about things we do with our ears that's listening to perfect scores perfect music mm. from movies that's right so we're talking about our favorite our 10 favorite movie scores uh we have a list of 10 movies each and uh, we're also gonna have uh we have a huge list of honorable mentions to talk about just yes. like one-off songs or like things we like but not as much as other things we like but we have to talk about them all because 10 is not enough that's kind right. of a, a, a situation yeah um one other thing I'd like to talk about specifically, Ooh. okay, before we get to the before we get into the meat and potatoes, yes, um, we can look at the little microgreens on the side. Miss um, <laughs> Marvel is finished. We've talked about it a little bit uh, last week and the week prior. Yeah, I think we've, t we've um, touched on it. Yeah, but <clears throat> it's it's over now, and we can finally give our strong opinions. Our based takes. Mm -hmm. um, here's the dish from me. Miss Marvel is my favorite MCU show. Wow, that is that's nuts. A fact. I don't think so. I think that's um, crazy talk. I think it's criminally underrated <laughs> and should be uh, held in the vaults of Valhalla. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the, the, halls the halls of Valhalla. Of yes. Valhalla. That, that was hard, <laughs> hard for me to say. It's hard to say. Um, I just thought it was like such a fun show. Um, I, I guess if I have to give it a critique to mm. sound, you know, to, to make my argument not so biased, uh, I think the antagonistic forces in this show are less than par. Yeah. Um, there's like three antagonistic forces throughout this show and none of them really develop at all right uh, which is a bit of a bummer and uh, sometimes the special effects are really bad <laughs> sometimes they're okay yeah uh, sometimes they're really bad but i think the story isn't really about that it's like about the characters 
and family mm-hmm. and I like family. I do a podcast with my family. There you go. And uh, it's beautiful. It's so that. good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, I really liked it too. I think, like you said, the villain, it has a, a villain and then it it's just like the villain's dead now really quickly. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it happens super fast, which is kind of weird. But, you know, it's just it's just fun and like you can tell that the show had a team of people who were really passionate about it and who really wanted to tell the story. And um, we talked about Iman Vellani, the actress who plays Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan. She is obviously just in love with the character, having a great time. Um, I was talking to uh, Elisha, who was on our Mm. episode where we ranked um, all the Disney Plus MCU shows, and he hates the show. Uh, oh, which no. is just so on brand for him. Uh, so <clears throat> hate everything that's good and love everything <laughs> yeah. that's bad. So I guess, yeah, I guess people are, some people are not liking it, which I don't really, I'm just like, guys, this is a fun, it's a fun show that I, I enjoy. I think so the, mm-hmm. the first episode is like, j- is amazing. Like some of the best Marvel stuff in years, mm-hmm. right? Cause it's like the first episode is super like, there's tons of like animations and creative camera work and stuff. And that kind of like, it does stick around for the rest of the series, but it, it kind of goes down quite a bit from that point. Um, mm-hmm. There's not quite as much of that creativity from the first episode throughout the entire series. So that's a little nitpick if I had to have one, but it's great. It's, it's, so it's, good. it's just a fun show, man. I would even uh, counter, because I have something specifically in my notes called the special dolly shot. Mm, yes. And uh, so in the final battle, I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't watched, but there's a shot uh, where a dolly, which is a thing that holds a camera mm-hmm, pretty much mm-hmm. on a vehicle or what have you, and it goes under a car. And then someone on the other side of the car, another operator, picks the camera up off the dolly, which you have to break a dolly to be able to do that. It doesn't come unlocked. Mm -hmm. And so they put the camera rolls under the car, and in one shot, someone else picks up the camera, and then they focus on the character, and they go around the car, and the fight continues. It's pretty dope. I, it, (laughs) something about, something about, movies and like the the way that i am like when 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 i'm reminded that it's made by people and there's someone behind the camera for whatever reason that just really gets me Mm. i was watching a show called peaky blinders which is a netflix show about a british gang um there was a shot where it was like a you know handheld shoulder cam right sure nothing special but you could tell that <clears throat> the actor got a little too close to the camera, mm. like he missed his mark a little. And you could see the guy kind of like shuffle backwards a little. And I could totally tell that it was him moving backwards like that because he kind of did one of these little mm-hmm. leans. And I was just like, oh, it's, it's amazing. It's perfect. <laughs> because awesome. it, like, it like triggers a memory that I'm like, oh, yeah, someone, this is being yeah, made. Being like it's made art, by somebody. you know? Right. Yeah. So I just love that. Um, specifically, mm. and I'm just going to keep talking about it because I can't stop myself. <laughs> um, in the movie Knives Out, uh, okay, yes. great, this also occurs. Movie. Such a good movie. Probably talk um, about it in a, in a few yes, minutes. There, 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 is, um, there is a scene where a will is read, and after the will is read, yes, is a character good. is bequeathed a house. <laughs> yes. Bequeathed is the correct word, by the way. Uh, yeah. I, be- um, I believe you. I, I can't confirm, but I believe you. <laughs> it, yeah, it totally is, 100%. I know words. <laughs> yes. Um, and so the family is all running out after this person who got the house, right? Mm-hmm. And she's like running away. And there's this nice smooth dolly shot down the stairs. And she gets to the bottom of the stairs. And the music, which we'll talk about, is really good here. <laughs> and this violin goes, Wee! <laughs> and uh, someone picks the dolly off or the camera off yeah. the dolly and it's like free cam. You see it. And go I, like, 
You see it, like, yeah, you literally the see it be yeah. pulled off the thing. Oh. It's amazing. Ah! Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> I, I literally, I'm in the theater with my parents. I got up off my chair, oh, bro. Oh, dude. I love it so much. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, man. Oh, man. This okay, is so, hype. I so that's enough that about that. It's so good. Okay. It's a great movie. Um, now I've had my rant. I apologize. Oh, Knives Out is boring. Oh, it's so predictable. I'm like, uh, get out of town. What? Get out of here. Knives Out is a masterpiece. Ryan Johnson is the that's best so filmmaker Ryan to ever Johnson. live. Base. Never made That's a, a bad great movie. take. <laughs> Never ever in his life. He you made guys, the best okay? Star Wars movie. Did I say it? I said it. Well, <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but it One is in the, the top three. Yeah. Okay. Um, great score in that movie, by the way. Great score. Ooh, scores. Let's yeah. talk about scores. Yeah, is that what go. we're here to do? That's what we're talking okay. about. Okay. Nice transition. Um, yeah. What's in a score, Jordan? Well, a score, we wanted to, we need to distinguish between, there are two things in movies regarding music, usually. There's the score and there's the soundtrack. Some movies have both, some movies have one or the other. Um, a score, or let me start with, a soundtrack is like your, your Guardians of the Galaxy volume, uh, awesome mix volume one. All the licensed music hooked on a feeling. All the, all the pop songs from our world that are in the movie, that's the soundtrack that you can buy at the store. The score of a movie is the music written by a composer and, 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 and played by an orchestra. That's my violin motion. Mm, uh, <laughs> for visual, visual <laughs> listeners. Uh, played, usually played by an orchestra. It can, be, it can be whatever instruments, but, you know. Original music written for a movie, a TV show, a video game, whatever, what have you. Mm-hmm. So a score is uh, nine times out of ten, you know, well, it's always music in some, in some form, but it also sometimes includes sound effects, that sort of thing. So it's a lot of music. Under the, yeah. Yeah, under the larger umbrella of sound design. Sound design, yes. You get all your sound effects and little yeah. cues and such. So, we, so me and Joshua, we love movie scores where we're, we're, we're mm-hmm. kind of nerds for music we were both in a uh, 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 band uh yes back in the day when we were kids i played clarinet what did you play i played the french horn the best instrument to ever live Low key, high key john williams favorite instrument it's which that that's a pretty good indicator of what's a good instrument yeah every time a french horn is like has a solo and a score i'm like wow this this is great. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're we're kind of music nerds. We've been we we were we were the band nerds back in the day, and we uh, my favorite times in band class was when we were when we played songs from movies. Uh, mm-hmm. We well I'll I'll talk about some later because they show up on my list. But I loved when we would play movie scores in our band and all of that. And when I played piano, I would like. I would play movie scores by ear. I had a whole, I had like a whole arrangement from How to Train Your Dragon that I like wrote myself Mm. um, because I was just like in love with it, which we'll get to. But um, yeah, we're 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 suckers for some some good uh, music in general. So uh, yeah, we got some. You want to start us off with some some honorable mentions? You got we got a big list of honorables. Yeah. So. These are things that I really like. Oh, uh, we, re- we should uh, say again now that we explained. We're talking about scores. We compiled all of our favorite scores. We picked two songs from each of our favorite scores and put mm-hmm. them on a Spotify playlist and a YouTube yes. playlist. So wherever you're, and you are, and I'll probably make an Apple Music playlist. There you as go, well. that too. Wherever you are, you can. When we're talking about a song, and if you want to listen to it, you can. Go listen to it, come back and hear us talk about it or listen to it all after. Um, so that's there for you. It's in the episode description. Hit that up. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay. Yes. So maybe some of these honorable mentions might also show up on that playlist. Yeah. Um, just to give like a nice spread of a ton of songs mm-hmm. so you can listen to all of them. Okay. I have a ton of honorable mentions. 
Um, so does Jordan. So we're just going to kind of rapid fire rapid these. Fire. And then we'll get into the movie specific ones on the list. My first one is uh, the soundtrack to, or uh, the score, I should say, yes, of you. Sword Art Online, oh. which is an anime. Um, it's a show I've watched many times and uh, I like quite a lot. And the music is, it's like a, it's kind of like a shorter score. There's like 10, 15 songs, mm -hmm. but they're, so they're all played a lot. And this is a theme that's going to come up for me in my list a lot mm. is uh, replayability, repeatability. Yep. And uh, so like having a shorter list of songs that are all memorable and memorizable um, and easy to hum along to uh, make it very enjoyable for me. So Sword Art Online, really good. Uh, Logan is my next one. Logan was on my list uh, as a top tenor. Of, because I movie. couldn't think of anything else. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Logan the movie, yeah. Um, and it was on my list to talk about one specific moment in the, in the movie, and then I realized that's not really the whole score. Sure. That's just one moment. So I kind of, I knocked it off the list. But I'll talk about the moment anyway. That's why there I made go. this list of honorable mentions. So there's a moment where a character dies, and it's dark outside, and there's a car on fire, and someone is screaming, <laughs> and the music's like, <laughs> and she's screaming, and it's literally not even really music. It's just like one synthetic horn mm -hmm. sound, and it, it just, oh, it just makes, sends chills through my body. Uh, so that's really cool, that's a great and score. I wanted to talk about that briefly. Yeah, it, yeah okay, it is, it is pretty good. I just, uh, I don't listen to most of it you know yep, yep uh everything on my list is stuff that i listen to on a regular basis there you go so that that was something else that i kind of yep uh as qualifiers for it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh the next one i have is the name of the song kamido tanjiro no uta which is a song about a character again from an anime called demon slayer Ooh. very good it's a uh it's a very powerful song about family and love and sacrifice mm. and it makes me cry <laughs> when i listen to it yeah, and go. i can picture the episode that it's played in perfectly as it's like shot for shot to the music mm. i can see it in my head which doesn't happen very often and it gets me hype in the car when i listen to <laughs> it um there is a song called Life and Death from the long series TV show called Lost. Mm. Um, Jordan, you haven't seen Lost, right? No, I haven't. Yeah, so I won't spoil it. Um, this song is played at the end of the show. Mm. It's the last song you hear. It's never played in the rest of the TV show. And it's just a piano going... Bum, dum, 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 da, dum. It's like, oh. and it just like kind of swells <laughs> yeah. slowly. It gets louder as over and over. Really nice. nice. Really good. Okay, that's really great. We like that. Um, Beasts of No Nation, an Oscar winning film um, featuring Idris Elba as a warlord oh. in Africa. Uh, there's a song called Song for Strika who is a child soldier uh, in this movie. And it's a beautiful song about that kid. There you go. And I like that song. Very beautiful. Uh, musicals. I wanted to briefly mention musicals, like musicals. Because that's kind of like an interesting little thing on the side. Um, Sound of Music is my favorite musical. Shout out Sherry there you go. for that one. Thank you for that. Julie Andrews, pretty good. Pretty and good. Uh, Tarzan oh. is a... Because Phil, Phil Collins, you know, that's such yeah. like a, I, I almost put Tarzan at number 10 too. That was a close one uh, just because there's so it's many bangers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really, really like that. Because it, it, it's weird because it's like not specifically like all orchestra, mm -hmm. but it is like music made for the movie. Yeah. So it was, it was a little weird. I didn't know where a, to put it's it. It's a so musical, it's just, but the characters aren't singing. It's just Phil Collins right. writing pop songs Bangers. for the movie that are mm -hmm. really good so really really good yeah so that's one thing um three 
uh, soundtracks that I love to death. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, obviously. Uh, Baby Driver. Mm -hmm. Edgar Wright wrote... or Well, he didn't write, sorry. He chose all the songs and then made the movie around the songs. So you're, you and, are like, talking directed specifically and edited. soundtracks. Yes, yeah. these three are the soundtracks. The soundtracks. Guardians, uh, Guardians 1 specifically does have a very nice score as yeah, well. The sure. theme is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, Baby Driver, uh, all of the sc soundtrack songs that he chose, pop songs and whatever else, were chosen, and then he wrote the movie to fly kind of through the songs mm -hmm. that he chose in the order that he chose them as well, which is cool. Um, Mama Mia, I guess I'll put that on the list too. Oh. That's like a cool thing. Uh, ABBA, they just made an album and then someone was like, let's make a musical of all these songs in this album, which is cool. I didn't know um, that. Surf's Up, a movie about penguins mm. surfing. Uh, Shia LaBeouf again. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, Shia LaBeouf. In one of, honestly, one of my favorite Shia LaBeouf I, yeah, performances. That movie great, is that movie. so hilariously good. <laughs> I love that movie. Um, all of the music in that movie, like the, it's like the epitome of 2000s music, like all the good 2000s music. I don't like most 2000s music, but that's like a good, mm -hmm. there's like a, a lot of good music in that one, sure. soundtrack wise. Moving back to scores briefly, we have Inception. Uh, kind of bringing in the blah, blah. thing, uh, which is cool. Also, Hans Zimmer is killing it with songs like Time. Yep. Uh, very good. Very iconic. Um, yes. Oh, yes. Um, theme songs, like intros mm -hmm. to shows mm -hmm. and stuff, like the Friends show, Shout Out Friends. Um, that's like iconic, you know, you yep. love that. Um, for whatever reason, Anime specifically loves theme songs and ending songs, mm. and there's like a whole culture surrounding openings and endings, uh, which is fun, and they're all very good, and like popular Japanese mm -hmm. artists will get paid a ton of money to do the intros to shows, which I like, so all of it's like highly produced, and competition breeds uh, excellence or whatever, you know, something capitalistic would say. Um, Pokemon music? Is very good, specifically uh, Gen 5, black go. and white. So good. Oh my gosh. Uh, Mario, mm -hmm. very good, iconic. iconic. You gotta love that. Um, Randy Newman, no one on love Earth has a voice like Randy Newman. And uh, we love him in Toy Story and uh, Monsters, Inc. and such. Yep. Very, very good, very iconic. And then my last one is Silence. Mm. Amazing movie. Which, uh, well... I wasn't. I wasn't talking about a movie. I meant literally speaking. Oh, well, uh, silence. It is a great movie. <laughs> um, I don't know anything about a movie called Silence. Oh, dude, we should Apologies. watch it. Yeah, it's great. Um, Andrew Garfield, isn't it? Okay, I like him. <laughs> He's good. Anyway, continue. <laughs> um, I was just gonna say, like, sometimes no sound, no music is just as impactful as mm. a ton of loud horns. Uh, specifically in fight scenes, I like to hear like the punching and stuff. Yep. Yep. I think it just kind of like brings a atmosphere to it. So that's my list of things. There you go. I've ranted long enough. Your turn. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Before I forget, I'm going to go through my list, but later I want to ask you what okay. makes a bad score or a bad soundtrack. Think about Ooh. that while I do this. My honorable okay. mentions, Stranger Things. Everybody loves the Stranger Things music. Stranger Things has both a great score and a great soundtrack, uh, especially season four. Uh, everybody mm. uh, running up that hill, Kate Bush. Uh, wow. What they did, and w the best thing is when, 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 when they put the soundtrack and the score together. That is just that's the best thing ever. It, it's Stranger Things season four, running up that hill. They they add some score and it's great. Also a great example of that into the Spider Verse. Great soundtrack, mm. great score. Yes, that go together very well. Uh, Loki, I love the score for Loki. It like enhances that show so much for me. Super creative. Um, love that. Uh, Batman 1989. So the first Michael Keaton Batman, very iconic Batman theme written by Danny Elfman. Um, I really like that score. It's very nostalgic, very iconic. In the same vein, uh, the first Superman, great. Some great John Williams 
themes mm-hmm. for a Superman movies um, that have always been great to listen to. I have that on vinyl, uh, one of the original copies. Nice. So that's pretty cool. Um, I also have Randy Newman, all the Pixar Randy Newman scores and soundtracks. Um, also, is Randy Newman are is, are Randy Newman and Thomas Newman related? Is Thomas his son? They are. I don't know if they're father and son, father but and they son definitely are, are related. related. They're both great. Yes. They both do Pixar movies, and they're both great. Uh, the Newmans. Let's see. I lost my list. Where to go? Joker. Uh, Joker. Joker has a great score. I don't really listen to it that often because it's weird and creepy, um, mm-hmm. but I love it in the movie. It enhances that film super well. Uh, Shazam. Uh, there's really, I don't listen to any of Shazam except for the 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 song that is titled Shazam. It's like mm. it's so good. It's like super. Um, it's almost like cliche superhero music. But it's just like, it's really good. You should listen to that. Um, okay. I love all the music for the Snyder trilogy of DC movies. So Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Zack Snyder's Justice League, all written by Hans Zimmer. And I think they brought in um, Junkie XL for the last two. Um, and they work together on those. Uh, I'd had Man of Steel on my list, and then I thought about it more, and I bumped it off. Um, Rough. I really love all the music and themes that Zimmer wrote for that trilogy. Uh, great stuff. And also uh, theme songs. I've always loved like, I've always loved TV theme songs in general, but like there are theme songs from like old Star Trek series and like Stargate and like all like a bunch of old shows that I used to watch mm-hmm. um, that have really good series theme songs um, that were that I just love and were inspiring to me. There's something uh, Joshua and I are working on. We'll talk about in a future episode uh, where I wrote, I've been writing some music. Mm. I don't know if we'll use any of that music, but I was writing some music for this thing we're doing. Um, and it's copyright free. Yes, that's right. So we can use it. The uh, one song I wrote was very inspired by those types of theme songs. And that's kind of the vibe I was going for. Um, and the the Mandalorian, love the mm. score for the Mandalorian. Um, great, like kind of Western samurai inspired music for the show that is Western and samurai inspired. Uh, great. Uh, I have Blade Runner twenty forty nine is on my honorable mentions. We'll talk about it later. Also, um, great stuff. Uh, mm. Have you seen Judas and the Black Messiah? I have not. That movie's fantastic. You should definitely watch that. Um, the music is super good, uh, super creative. Um, yeah, I also have Knives Out on my list. Ooh. Um, Knives Out has a really good score that is like captures the vibe perfectly. Um, recent movie, No Time to Die, uh, the latest James Bond movie, Hans Zimmer again, writing a fantastic score. Um, there's a song at the James end. James Bond in general. There's a song at the end where a character dies. I won't spoil her. I won't spoil who that is, but a character is dying, and <laughs> and the music is just I cry every time. So, mm. uh, and also I lastly so. on my honorable mentions, uh, Dune. Also Hans Zimmer. Once again, the score for Dune is really, really, really good. Uh, I know you haven't seen that yet, but I haven't seen it. It's fantastic. I just want to read the book, but I'm too lazy Super to vibe. buy the book. That's my list. So, wowzers. Ugh. Okay, All right, we're thirty minutes. You asked in. me a question. Yeah. You asked what me you a think? question about uh, what makes a bad score. Do bad scores even exist? Like, what makes uh, a bad score? Well, what makes a good score? I would say. I mean, you mentioned it a lot during your honorable mentions. Was that uh, a score should? It serves to enhance a movie. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like it when scores take over or are like way better than they should be. Mm. That's, that sounds weird when I say it, but like they're too loud or they are, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to even quantify. I honestly think like Tenet 
I I like the score in Tenet, but mm. it's so freaking loud. Yeah, <laughs> and like you can't the, the beating like it's like, yeah it's dope, you know what I'm but it's also like yeah you can't hear what people are That's saying really half movie, the time, and like yeah. it's not a bad score necessarily, but like sometimes it is distracting. And that's, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So I guess if, to put it in the simplest terms, if it, if it doesn't fit the tone mm-hmm. very well, or it's too fast or too slow, that, that tends to make it less enjoyable. Yeah. Or if it's like poorly placed, I don't think that's the uh, score's fault yeah. necessarily, the editor. Uh, putting it yeah. too soon or too early or something like that, whatever, yeah. can do a disservice to the score. But for sure, I think uh, a, yeah. for the most part, scores are better than movies. Oh, yo, <laughs> I wanted to uh, talk about that. Uh, one movie that comes to mind: The Rise of Skywalker, which we love. <laughs> oh, I hate them. Um. So the score is obviously written by John Williams. It's not a bad score. It's John Williams. But it's one of the worst scores in all of Star Wars because... So John, like composers like John Williams compose all this music and then there's some rando who they hire to put the music in places in the movie, right? The editor, um, that sort of thing. And usually, like the composer and the editors will work together to like, so I wrote this theme for Darth Vader, so when Darth Vader comes on the screen, put this music in, right? But Mm -hmm. in The Rise of Skywalker, whoever edited the music in Rise of Skywalker, which, uh, shout out to a YouTube channel, uh, Sideways, has a great video explaining this concept. Um, In The Rise of Skywalker, the editor just places music in places that it doesn't belong. So he'll place like Han and Leia's theme in a scene with like, I don't know, Ray and Kylo or like he'll place uh, the force theme in like a scene where nobody's using the force or he'll place Yoda's theme where Yoda's nowhere to be found. And Mm. so it's like that. I hate, I hate, that's one of the reasons I hate Rise of Skywalker is because it like, it uses music incorrectly in places that it doesn't belong mm. and also an example of a bounce bad soundtrack uh we haven't gotten to it yet but the first suicide squad movie they made um is terrible for one it's a terrible movie it has a terrible soundtrack <laughs> uh because they guardians of the galaxy had come out and excuse me uh that was the first movie first superhero movie to like utilize soundtrack like in the way that it did Mm -hmm. and DC wanted to replicate that. So they just thought, okay, just put music in the movie wherever, however often. So that movie is basically just like a nonstop music video of music that has no reason to be in it. And it's just distracting and bad. So, um, yikes. Yeah. I think what we like in scores is when it enhances the movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, it fits with the style of the film. Uh, and that it sounds good, <laughs> which is, right. you know. There is, of course, the uh, artistic preference. Yes, preference, of course. At play as well. So we should get into it. We're Let's do 30 it. minutes in, so here we go. That's fine, man. Okay, um, do you want to go, I'll do my whole list, or mm. 10 and 10 and 9 and 9 and so on? Oh, uh, just do, let's do, uh, let's alternate, yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So for my number 10, I have the movie 1917 Ooh. by Thomas Newman. Um, this movie is uh, composed, or sorry, it's, sh- it's made to look like it's all one shot. Mm. Yes. Which artistically is very difficult. Um, you have to create a set that is as long as the scene. Mm-hmm. So that if they're walking through it, they get to the end when the scene ends, which is incredibly hard to do. Yeah. So the whole process of the movie is made with the idea that the scenes are they're, they're built to be one shot. Mm-hmm. Everything is one shot. And so I think that that even tied into the music a little here, 
where songs are the specific length of the scene or they are like a lot of times you'll have themes like John Williams will make a theme for Yoda right in a right and then they will cut it down to fit the scene sure. better mm-hmm. what have you like Ray's theme is like eight minutes long right but her first scene in the Star Destroyer is like three minutes long mm-hmm. so they cut her her theme down in this movie i don't think any song is cut or shortened at any point Mm. there's even a point where the character we're following goes unconscious and it's the only like obvious break in the shot Mm -hmm. and the music stops at that point but it's not cut off the music finishes there Mm. so i think that that is really beautiful so the two songs that I have are The Night Window and 1600 Men. Mm-hmm. So spoilers, I guess, for this movie. Um, our, our soldier that we're following, whose name escapes me. Um, this is, uh, this he, is one of your favorite movies, right? What number was it? I forget. Yes. Oh, gosh. Uh, six or seven, I think. Mm. Uh, it's up there. It's up there. Um, Right after he is shot in the head, he wakes up. Um, like I, I mean, it glanced his helmet, right? He didn't. He got die. shot in the head. Um, he woke up. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, the, I think he, the, d- bullet missed him. And he just fell down the stairs and hit his head. Ah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Uh, he wakes up and has to travel through Yakust. Mm-hmm. which is a city or a town in France, I think, is where they're at at the time. And um, it's at night, during the night window, and the song is him running through town, surrounded by the enemy, which I believe is German. Um, and they find him there, so they start shooting flares up in the sky. Mm-hmm. And so the, the flares go up and around on these, like, wires so that they're specifically placed mm-hmm. so that the shadows are moving. And it's, like, this weird horror film-esque, like, mm. the, it's, like, night, but it's really bright out and the shadows are moving super quickly. And the music kind of swells every time the uh, lights go over. It's very, very nice. I like that a lot. Mm. So that's something I really enjoy. And uh, 1600 Men is like the uh, climax of the film when he runs across the battlefield uh, to save these men who are charging into a trap. And it's just like a nice, like classic orchestral, swelling, symphonic. uh, It's amazing. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. So. Those are the two songs that I picked. I just think that it's um, it's like the epitome of what a film score should be mm-hmm. in my eyes. It kind of just fits exactly how it should. It yeah. feels right. Um, for a war movie, it also has like a specific vibe that the music kind of fits. Mm-hmm. So I just really like that one. Nice. Love there that. I, need, I still need to watch that movie again. Um, I saw it once so and good. I enjoyed it, but I need to watch it again. Um, nice. My number ten is Marriage Story. Have you seen Marriage mm. Story? I have. It's a great film. It's on Netflix. Uh, My parents haven't seen. It. They should. It's pretty good. Um, it's kind of, you know, depressing sometimes, but. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, Marriage Story is really good. It's about. Uh, Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson, who are uh, married with a kid, and they're going through the process of getting a divorce because they kind of hate each other, but also love each other, kind of. It's so, it's a movie about you know love and marriage and divorce, and it's you know hard subject matter, but it's a really good movie with great acting. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely recommend so, it. And the music is written by Randy Newman, and we love Randy Newman. <laughs> Randy. And I, I just. I've seen the movie once and I don't know if I'll ever watch it again because <laughs> it is it's just, hard to watch. It's, it's a hard honestly. watch, honestly. Um, 
the the acting is so good but um yeah it's not a it's not like a super fun movie so um but i listen to the score all the time it's like it's it's just so good it's got this it's got the randy newman charm to it it's super like um it's just happy music and it's like he writes just kind of this like um what's the word i'm looking for like not necessarily not necessarily soulful but like almost like jovial happy tone Mm -hmm. um very similar to like toy story or something but joyful um i love it so much it has great melodies um randy newman writes really nice really pretty melodies and i just i love it in the context of the film because it's it's like it really starkly contrasts the like um the character the, the characters in this movie are super kind of they have explosive arguments they're super loud and crass and it's like a kind of sad movie with a really heavy subject matter but the music contrasts that in a way that like it's it's not distracting it like it it almost like enhances the like um this subject matter is happening but this music kind of captures the like beauty and simplicity of of their life together and um i just i really enjoy it i think it's really it's just a really pretty score so mm. um Very maybe pretty. i should watch that again but you know, we'll see one day we'll see um i'm up okay so here's here's where i uh break off into my own universe real quick there you go um my top 10 film scores uh comp- comprise is uh of movies, TV shows and video games yes. because they are better than other movies. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't come up with 10 movies. Mm. I had to like these I when you, we started thinking about this, I literally these are the 10 Plus, like, you know, all those honorable mentions mm-hmm. <clears throat> that I thought of immediately. Yeah. And I was like, these are the ones that I listen to. Sure. They are better than movie scores. So I couldn't, I couldn't pick 10 movies and not talk about all of these ones in great detail. Mm-hmm. So I chose these ones instead of movies. There you go. So apologies to any purists who are like, I need 10 movies on my list. <laughs> I don't think there is anyone who will object to this, but, yeah. you know just to defend myself in the event. Um, my number nine is Destiny. Destiny. Uh, Destiny is a video game that came out in 2014. Um, Destiny 2 came out in 2018, maybe? 2019? No uh, it's been ongoing ever since. It's my favorite video game of all time. Oh, wow. Um, it's a first-person shooter, MMORPG sort of thing. Interesting. It's... You shoot aliens to defend I the last I city on Earth. It is free to play. There you go. On uh, Steam. I don't know if you can play it on your brand new laptop that you didn't mention, but... Um, I have my, my, my old Xbox I can pull it up on, probably. Oh, yeah. You can pull it up on the Xbox. Um, so this music kind of... it For me... Well, yeah, okay. So, like, video games, you, you fight the boss... Mm-hmm. It has boss music. That music is the same every time. If it's bad, it's the most annoying thing in the world. If it's good, it's the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah. Right? So the songs I've chosen are Guardian, which is a theme song kind of uh, when you log into the game. Mm. You hear this song. Mm-hmm. It's very it's um, very vocal. It's like a, a choir with some strings in the background. It kinda, it's very nice. Very, yeah. It's just like you log into the game, Oh, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, that's that's nice. I'm playing Destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then The Last Array, which is a song made for a random mission early in the game. Mm. Just literally a random level. Nothing special. No big boss. Just you're like kind of fighting waves. Mm-hmm. They're coming in. And in the background, this big satellite is moving up because you're turning on the satellite. And the music is so epic for no reason (laughs) it's just so like oh it like really hypes you up and um 
Yeah, so it's, you know, shooting aliens has never been so fun. <laughs> it, it, it's just like, it makes it so easy yeah. to, like, get hype and be in that space. Man, so I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to um, play that. It's really fun. And that you can get to that level without paying for anything. So you well, can play that. Yeah. It's good. Um, I didn't mention the orchestrators, the, the arrangers. Uh, Michael Salvatore, several other names, and then at the end of the list was Paul McCartney, uh, the Beatle. Um, he was like an advisor on this Interesting. soundtrack for whatever reason. That's wild. Um, he he just did the first instance. Uh, he did not come back for any of the subsequent scores um, because as the game is almost ten years old, and they've made many more songs since then. But he sure. did do the first. 20 or so that were on the initial score, mm. which is cool, I guess. Um, I don't know much about the Beatles, sadly. I like Hey Jude. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Destiny is just, it's a very nostalgic game. I don't play it anymore. Um, but, you know, the music just kind of reminds me of good times with good people. So, nice. I like that a lot. It's there very nostalgic for me. Reminds me That's of a happy too. time. Nice. All right. That's super good. I I forgot I was playing Jedi Fallen Order the other day. Also a video game mm. with a with a good score. Pretty good. Um yeah, my number nine is I kinda cheated. It's just it's a Spider Man one through three. They're all Danny Elfman scores. And they're all similar. So they're just all they're all on there. <laughs> it's fine. It's <laughs> yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. The Spider Man scores, so that the first Tobey Maguire movies, um, super iconic um, music. Um, I love the score for Spider Man. I think it it's super interesting because it's not a super like typical Spider Man's theme in those movies is not like a typical superhero theme. Like it's super um, percussive and almost somber instead of like. Mm -hmm most superhero themes that are like big fanfares and that sort of thing. Um, it's almost like a Batman theme almost like it sounds more right. Batman than anything else. Um, super unique. Uh, Danny Elfman really like has some really nice themes that enhance emotional moments in the, in the movies and um, it's utilized super well. We talked about in our favorite movies when I talked about Spider-Man, the, when he's going up the wall for the first time, and he's like, yeah. dun, bum, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it's super fun. Um, That's great. Yeah. I don't have much else to say about it other than it's just like, it's super nostalgic to me. Um, oh, I didn't talk about my specific songs on the last one, but specific songs for these, um, Spider-Man 1, there's a song called Farewell at the end that's super um, emotional when he's at um, a funeral for Uncle Ben. Mm. Um, super or is it that no it's a funeral for Norman Osborn um, that sounds about right yeah uh, super good song super um, yeah emotional nostalgic and from Spider-Man 2 uh, there's a song called A Phone Call um, I just really I listen to those songs all the time so get me um, some cookies with nuts in them yes <laughs> 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 oh man I love those movies so much I I don't remember who I was talking to the other day, but they were like, Spider-Man 3 sucks. And I was like, nah, dude, but like, <laughs> watch it, watch it again. Cause it's great. <laughs> watch it again. I'm the biggest fan of Spider-Man 3. So that's my number nine. Powerful. Powerful. It's a, those are good movies. And I'm sure that it being your favorite movie trilogy of all time did not influence <laughs> your decision to put it on this list. At all. Yeah. I mean, whatever. I'm just kidding. Of course we have something else on our list that is, of course, obviously, uh, influenced yes anyway many of these um, are influenced by our top 10 movies of all time yes um my number eight is blade runner 2049 yes. by hans zimmer oh and benjamin gosh. walfish um, what a movie we talk, well jordan talked about it in his honorable mentions i'm gonna talk about it in my top 10 um i think so the songs i have chosen are mesa and Rain, which I think are the most normal songs on yeah. this score. <laughs> um, Blade Runner, the reason I wanted to talk about it at length was because it's so different. Mm -hmm. 
I think the first Blade Runner, which I didn't take the time to look up who did the music for that. I don't know. Um, it's just so unique, and it's not like any movie before or since. It's 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 loud. It's abrasive. It's it gets in the way. And we talked about how those are things that make a score bad, but for this movie in particular, when everything is so dark and gloomy and wet, I think that the music being like something that just kind of pierces through all of that, mm-hmm. whether it's happy or sad, I think just kind of works. Yep. Um, and I don't think anything sounds like it, which I think mm-hmm. is cool on its own. Um, it's not necessarily, like, most of the score, I wouldn't really listen to. Right. Um, but, like, when you're watching the movie, it's, it's a vibe. It for sure, sure. Is, yeah. And I think, in terms of that specific movie, I don't think anything else could have really worked. A traditional mm-hmm. score, I don't think, would have worked. So, right. for Blade Runner 2049, there are moments of, like, soft reprieve and time to rest and quiet and just, like experience uh roger deakins and his mm-hmm. gorgeous shots and denis, Villene- denis villeneuve's uh wonderful mind yes um Amazing. and um wow what a good movie eh? yeah the uh, so it good. also goes super well with the sound design in that movie the sound design is super yes. creative too and the score goes really well with that there's a lot of like mm-hmm. There's this one sound effect where it's like an engine revving. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's like they they stuck a mic in a trumpet yeah, or something, something or like, like a trombone. Yeah, it's super cool. And it's just like sometimes you're like, is that the score? Because it, I don't know, it goes well. Yeah, together. it's I yeah, that's really really nice. So um, if you haven't watched that movie yeah, yet, Mesa and Rain, go watch. Oh my it gosh, right now. go watch it. Yeah. You should watch Blade Runner. Yeah. Before you watch Blade Runner 2049, <laughs> this guy over here yeah, didn't not, do that. I've not done that. But it honestly it won't really like ruin it yeah. for you if you but it's one I don't of my think favorite you'll enjoy the seen. first one is yeah. yeah, that's true. So, we love that. Okay. Number 8. Okay, for yeah, my number 8. I also kind of cheated again. I told myself I wasn't going to put uh Star Wars on this list and I I may have put it on here twice, <laughs> oh, but geez. my number eight is Solo, um, which is a Star mm, Wars movie, that's but not it's, John it's not John Williams, so I thought, okay, I can put oh, this there on you. there. Uh, so Solo's music was written by John Powell, which is like, I think John Powell might actually be my favorite composer. Even, He's up and coming, bro. Even more than Sir John Williams. I think John Powell might be my favorite. Um, I just said, oh my gosh, I love him so much. <laughs> Um, I love the score for Solo. It is like, it's so creative for Star Wars. Like, it doesn't sound like any other Star Wars thing. There are moments that, you know, uh, sound very Star Wars. But, um, I think, like, contrasting with Rogue One, for example, the other Star Wars story movie, um, I like that score written by Giacchino. Giacchino. Um, but it's a little bit like, it's a little bit too John Williams, but not, it's mm-hmm. not John Williams, but he's trying to sound too John Williams. Um, but for Solo, I think John Powell did a great job, like being himself and writing a really nice score. The two songs specifically, Lando's Closet and Flying with Chewie, um, mm. are so good. Uh, like I love, I listen to Lando's Closet all the time. It's just this. I'll have to add that to the list. You got to man. It's like, it's this beautiful like. They're Han and uh, Kira, I think is her name. Yes. Um, are in Lando's closet and they kiss and whatever because romance. Mm. Um, and it's just it's just beautiful like love theme, um, sweeping cello, all that good stuff. Um, and flying with Chewie is like. Oh my god. The first half of the song is like really upbeat. They're like on the run from the Empire or whatever. They get on the ship. Um uh, and then <laughs> at a certain point it fades out and then it fades back in and it's like this percussive and you get some acoustic guitar and some like grand piano and it's just like oh, oh man, we're we're both hearing it in our heads right now. But if you gotta listen it's- to it if you're 
go to go over to our, our our playlist and listen to it real quick because it's just it's so good. It's it makes so me so beautiful, happy. dude. Yeah. Actually, it's amazing. But yeah, I just I think it's a great Star Wars score, and I love John Powell so much, man. So good. He will show up wow. once again, if not more. I um. I'm going to also talk briefly about Flying with Chewy specifically. Yes. It's not on my list, um, but when I saw it on your list, I was like, that is a good song. <laughs> I remember the first time I heard it in the theater, mm. I was like, this is the least Star Wars song mm-hmm. I have ever heard. It sounds like it should be on planet Earth. Yes. Like, it literally, f- I was like, okay, and now we hear David Attenborough yeah. <laughs> come in and... Talk about a Wookiee in his natural or something. environment. Yeah. A Wookiee. <laughs> and, but like I listen to it in the car and I feel like I'm flying or something. Yeah. Like it's just like this. It's like, oh, wow. It really, it's, it's, ooh, wow. Music is great, you guys. Music is so good. Can you tell we like music? Okay. I can't, like, some people are like, I didn't even notice, I don't even notice music in movies. I'm like, that's sad. Because that's all I think about. (laughs) Yeah. Um, My number seven Seven. is another video game called Persona 5. Uh, Persona 5 is a JRPG turn-based combat game Mm -hmm. about a group of high school students um, going into the hearts of evil men and turning them good and making them apologize for their crimes. There you go. It's super cool. It's very fun. And uh, again, with that, with how I talked about earlier, uh, video games kind of force you to hear songs over and over and over again. Hmm. Um, so if they're good, then it's great because you get to hear them all the time. If they're bad, then it's annoying. So Persona 5 is notorious for having a ton of good songs. The two that I chose are Layer Cake and Beneath the Mask. So Layer Cake uh, is a store song, so you only hear it when you go into this specific store. This is the gun shop where you buy weapons and guns for your characters. Mm -hmm. And it's just like this like spy noir kind of song. I played it for you before. Uh, I don't know if you could hear it through Discord, Mm -hmm. but it's just like this ding, 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 ding. Um, but it, yeah, and the guitar comes in and it's, it's like two minutes long. It's very short, but it just plays on repeat mm. in the store while you're buying stuff. And I just, it, oh, it gets stuck in my head. I hum it all the time. I'm like, yeah, this is really good. Nice. Um, and then beneath the mask is a very like chill. It's like a guitar and a piano just kind of doing this dun, 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 dun. And this uh, woman, Lynn, singer, Lynn, and the Atlas Sound team, Mm. um, they work on this, because I didn't mention them earlier. Um, She has, like, Lynn is the singer for a couple of the songs, and then Atlas does the music itself. And so she sings on Beneath the Mask. It's very chill. It's like... There's the instrumental version and there's the vocal version. Mm. I listen to the one with words because I like words. And uh, But you can just as easily listen to the instrumental. It's like I could put on the YouTube uh, edited Beneath the Mask, but it's 10 hours long mm. uh, version and go to sleep to that song. It's just yeah. so peaceful. It's very simple. You don't have to like think to hear it at all. Mm. It's very nice. nice. You're just like walking around Tokyo, doing running errands, doing your job, whatever you're doing, sure. and you're listening to this music. Oh, it's very nice. Interesting. So that's what I like. Um, yeah. So the 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 rest of the music in the because I I could have chosen like five songs. Sure. From this one, um, it's kind of like a low, it's like a slower paced game and lower energy game because it's turn-based you can kind of take your time you're supposed to like manage your time in the game literally speaking Mm -hmm. like you only have you can only do so many things in a day before the next day comes and you have to get a certain um, things of amount of things accomplished by such and such day which i think is also you know 
we're talking about video games a fantastic idea mm-hmm. um and so i just like that a lot of the music is really high energy for this lower energy game yeah. which keeps you hype to play it because sometimes you play these low energy games and you get a little tired sure. like stardew valley or minecraft you're just like playing it at 3 a.m and it's like oh, i'm sleeping while i'm playing the game but this they keep the energy high and you're hyped to play it the whole time which i really enjoy yeah so that's fun nice number seven my number seven okay i, I cheated again <laughs> i'm cheating a lot in what? this list i have uh number my number seven avengers infinity war and endgame together because um, mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about both. And again, same composer. They're basically the same movie anyway. It's the same story. So True, true. Anyway, grouping them together. Both just incredible scores. I, um, I love Alan Silvestri's themes for the Avengers. His main Avengers theme is great. Um, yeah, I mean, Endgame, Endgame's score really just like blew me away. I think it, it was super surprising. To me, how good it was. I bought it on vinyl too, because um, I just like to have it. Um, and the my two songs are "Porch" from Infinity War and "The Real yes. Hero" from Endgame. And I wanted to talk yeah. about those two specifically because, on one hand, they're just great songs. Um, we talked, you talked about "Porch" a little bit a few episodes ago. Um, yes, it's just it's so, so good, good. Um, and. So Porch is a song at the end of Infinity War where Thanos wins and he um, gets to, like he says in the movie, he gets to like rest and gaze over the universe that he saved or whatever he says. Um, so it's this song that's like super like sad and somber, but it also is like super peaceful and that kind of like captures the emotion of the moment really well um and then contrast that with the real hero from endgame which is the song that plays over tony stark's funeral or oh. it's this like it's a little bit somber but it's also peaceful and like hopeful and tony stark is finally able to like he's dead but he rest. you know rest finally right so they like mm-hmm. complement each other really well and I just like love it. Uh, the, this is the most recent time I've cried in a theater when uh, Tony Stark's funeral and the song is playing, and the camera's panning over just like the 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 the, the numerous people um, that that Tony had affected, and 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 the cast of characters and the the, the cinematic universe mm. that you know was started by by Tony Stark and Robert Downey Jr. He's still alive, obviously. The actor didn't actually die, but the character yes. died. <laughs> and man, it just like it's so it's such oh. a good song. And then there's a freaking acoustic guitar solo. And like I'm a sucker for some acoustic guitar in my movie scores. So like it's just I love it so much. I listen to those songs all the time. And the part where Morgan asks for cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, just oh uh, my gosh, heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. I could cry thinking about it. Oh Holy man. Crap. I just realized we have the same number six, so that's exciting. Yes. That's pretty cool. That's pretty dope. Not planned, by the way. No. Um, what is it? Well, what let's is talk it? about it at the same time. We're talking about it. Um, this my number six is The Batman. The Batman for by both Michael of us. Giacchino. Oh man. Um so I'll just talk a little bit first and then you go. Yep, yep, yep. Um, this song wasn't on my list till I noticed it was on your list. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? You're right. I listened to that soundtrack. Well, okay. So uh, me and Jordan saw the movie twice in like three days mm-hmm. over the weekend that my sister got married. And uh, we just went to the theater twice and we're like, we got to watch this movie twice. And I started listening um, over and over again to all those songs. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, Can't Fight City Halloween. I don't know how to say those four words to make it sound (laughs) like it makes sense to me. Can't Fight City Halloween. City Halloween. Can't can't Fight City Halloween. (laughs) 
I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Um, but it's like the first song um, while uh, Bruce is giving his monologue, mm-hmm. write, writing in his diary. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a long song. And a lot of the things in this movie, to me, are very, like, quiet, slowly building songs mm. that I like the most. Yep. And this one is, uh, I want to say, like, five or six minutes long of just this, like, Bum, dum, 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 <laughs> over and over again and it's it like so good. slowly builds and adds these like <laughs> and it's like oh my gosh it, it just slowly builds and adds all these elements and you like i can see the criminals being afraid of the dark yeah and i really like that mm-hmm. Um, and then the Batman theme, which had come out with the trailer, which again mm-hmm. is just like bam, 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 over and over and again yeah. for like four minutes and just slowly gets louder. Mm-hmm. And it just, it, it's the simplest uh, theme ever. Yeah. But it's, like you said, not a typical superhero theme. Mm-hmm. I think Batman has like a special air about him where like people try a little bit harder when they make music for him. Yeah. Because uh, Dark Knight, the Joker music, mm. insane. Right. Didn't talk about that on my... But like that long mm-hmm. note um, at the beginning of the movie, super good. Um, I just think that it works perfectly. It's like yep. you don't have to try really hard to come up with these super complex and powerful melodies when something super simple and you know easy works just as well um and can be you know equally powerful and good and creative so sure. that's really cool i think i think michael works really hard to do that um i noticed something else got written on my <laughs> list so i'll talk about it as well uh it was one of the original memes on this podcast actually yeah. when we recorded the first episode i think we sung it on the outro. <laughs> um, Something in the Way by Nirvana yes. um, was kind of like remade into the score of this movie. Mm-hmm. And I th- think we talked about it briefly that the key from that song is the key of the whole score. Yep. And they kind of hold to that, at least for all of the major themes. Yeah. Um, they keep that score to the same key of that song. So then when that song is played a couple times in the movie, it fits right yeah. in. And that's pretty cool. And they've talked about it, so. how like it plays at the beginning of the movie and that song, like the, the meaning of that song carries a certain like meaning for Batman at the beginning of the movie. And by the end of the movie, after his character arc, the meaning of the song also fits his character arc in a different way than it did at the beginning of the movie. And so it's mm. like, wow, you know, that's filmmaking. <laughs> wow. wow. Oh my gosh. That's so good. I might have to, I'll add that to my, uh, uh, Batman video script or something. I need to talk about that. There you go. I'm still working on that, but yeah, dude, the Batman is so good. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it so much. Um, the, yeah, they, I think they released three singles before the movie came out, The Batman, Catwoman, and The Riddler. And I just think each one of those, you know, those are the main characters of the movie, The Batman, Catwoman, and The Riddler. And Jeek, mm-hmm. you know, like, crafted their themes so freaking well. Um, you talked about the Batman theme, how it's just like the... Well, the, the track the Batman has, the, like, Batman theme, that's like, bam, 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 bam. It's just like, two chords yeah over and over again um but it also has this like super sweeping melodic kind of romantic theme through the middle of it that's super good um catwoman's theme is super like it's like elegant and like flowy um and the riddler's theme is a a, the riddler's theme is a reharmonization of ave maria which is a song that plays a significant near role, and dear to yes, his in in that character's life um mm-hmm. the movie actually opens on ave maria um 
and it's just like it's genius it's like wow yeah <laughs> filmmaking so good Ugh. Uh, did I have anything else? We like movies. It's just so guys. good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's our number six. We're halfway through. Halfway through. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, my number five. Yep. Number five. Number five. Yes, my number five is uh, not a movie, not a video game. <laughs> it's a TV show. There you go. Uh, so maybe I'm cheating here, having multiple seasons, but it's all the same composer. Um, this show is called Attack on Titan, which anybody who has at least even heard of anime has probably heard of Attack on Titan. Mm-hmm. It's very popular these days um, as anime slowly takes over the West. And um, Hiroyuki Sawano is the composer for the score of these. Uh, the all four seasons actually of the show, and um, he, in particular, well, okay, yeah. Every song in this score is a banger, mm. and I think this show is very uh, angsty at first, and like a lot of yelling and screaming and young people being angry at the world, and then they get older and they're depressed Mm. and because the world sucks that they live in. Oh my gosh, the world sucks. And there are a couple moments that are supposed to be happy and the music is sad. Mm. And it's like, there's, there's no escape of, for these characters there are like literally yes there are happy moments with happy songs to like pull you up a little bit Mm -hmm. before they smash you down again in this show (laughs) over and over and over again this show is so depressing i've cried like five times (laughs) um but the songs that i picked out which by the way i don't know what's going on with this guy and naming songs but his songs are super oddly named uh this well okay the two songs that I have are Call of Silence, which isn't oddly named, yeah. um, and T-KT, which I couldn't tell you a single thing about what that means. <laughs> um, but he has songs that are like just a bunch of special characters, or you see big girl, colon, T-T. I don't know. Interesting. Any, what? <laughs> it makes no sense. Yeah. Interesting. Or he'll like name the song, but the letters are different versions of those letters, like Mm. special character versions of those letters. So he's just having fun naming his songs. Um, So these two songs in particular are, were chosen because they are only in the show one time. Mm. And so with anime and TV shows in general, a lot of themes are written and then they are used over and over again, which I've talked about in video games. I like that because the songs are good. I listen to them a bunch of times. It's easy to memorize them. I like that part. Uh, These two songs, though, are only used once because they're in two of the most impactful moments of the show. And I can't really talk about them uh, on the off chance that Jordan ever watches this show, which I highly recommend (laughs) everyone on the planet do. Maybe not for your first anime. Don't, this should not be your first. Mm. Because episode one... It it shouldn't be your first. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. It was like my 50th, and I still was like, whoa. <laughs> so, uh, Call of Silence is very sad about this girl who woke up after 60 years of, like, being in a coma. That's what I'm going to call it. Mm. And um, she sees something. And it's like the best art. And it's like, I can't, it's hard to explain yeah. without just spoiling sure. everything. Yeah. But it's like, it swells and it's singing and it's, oh, mm. so good. And then TKT is like your classic orchestral swelling song. That's very good mm. at a moment where a character makes a choice. And the choice is, um, 
good, bad. <laughs> uh, who can say? Who can say? And um, uh, the resulting consequence of that action is still playing out mm. a season later, which I like. And um, good music. There you go for that moment. Um, I wanted to briefly mention. Well, I, I guess I kind of already talked about it, but music in general, and this show exemplifies that for me, is that it can kind of force you to feel an emotion Mm -hmm. Um, and I think art in general is supposed to be able to do that for you and that's kind of like what art is is like making you feel what the artist felt when they made it right and um, for me uh, like classic like painting and drawing and visual art doesn't really do that very often Mm -hmm. for me aside from movies and TV, cinematography, um, because, I don't know, because it's real life, I don't know, I gotta psychoanalyze myself on that one. But music is, it, it's so easy for me mm. to get into a headspace that music wants me to be in, yeah. and I think that this show does a very good job of extracting those emotions. Mm. And you talked about Porch from uh, Infinity War. Yeah. That song is like, it makes you happy that thanos killed half yeah. the universe <laughs> like i feel the serenity and like the yeah. peace mm-hmm. that he feels and that scares me <laughs> but it like i i listen to that song and i'm like yes thanos well done yeah. <laughs> you did it <laughs> so good so yeah so that's awesome. there you go a little spiel for me spiel my number mm-hmm. five yeah uh star trek yes so star trek Ooh. 2009 the first J.J. Abrams film. Uh, Yeah. Star Trek 2009 is written... The music was written by Michael G. Kino, a legend. Kino. The man himself. Um, One of the big three. This was like... This is probably one of the most nostalgic scores of my entire life. Um, G. Kino is also a master of like themes and like... Mm -hmm. His music for this movie just like stuck in my mind so much. I probably saw it at like 10 years old or so. And it was like, so the, the two songs I have, uh, there's one called That New Car Smell and just the end credits song is on, is on here. Um, I was like 10, 11 years old. I had an MP3 player and I had, you know, some Stephen Curtis Chapman, some like, Ooh. you know, Michael W. Smith and then, I, <laughs> and then I had, then I had end credits from Star Trek 2009, Woo. and it's nine minutes long, and I listened to all nine minutes, probably more than I've ever listened to any song in my entire life. I was just, for whatever Whoa. reason, I just freaking loved listening to this. Like it's the end credits, so it's like a, it's like a, um, what's that called? A um, a compilation, a compilation of all the themes from the movie, and um. I just, I just love, lo- love, I love the vibe. I love it. Uh, that Michael G. Kino went for this movie, um, especially in that new car smell. He's using some sort of like electric violin type thing. It almost sounds sounds like a theremin, but it's like uh, mm. he uses it for um, like Spock's theme and Vulcan. Um, he uses it a lot in those scenes. And it's just like the melody is, and it's super sci-fi. It's super cool, um, and yeah, I, I just it's so nostalgic. I actually really love that movie. Um, it's a pretty good movie. I, I really like it, and it just the themes are just so they're just so good. They just every scene it has such a good uh, has a good track in it. So, man, yeah, I love it. Wow. It's great. It's great. That's awesome. I do um I do have the opening credit theme from that mm-hmm. song as well. And I do like to hum along mm-hmm. with that. I do you know what? I do really like those movies mm-hmm. quite a bit. Yeah. So uh yeah, maybe we'll watch those someday. We should. We can talk about yeah, it. We should do a Star Trek. Thing. Um Star Trek slow key pretty good. I love Star Trek. I mean it's pretty popular, but yeah. You know. Um Okay, my number four. I got a trio of animes here Ooh. in the in the top five. There you go. Uh, number four is Vinland Saga Ooh. 
by uh, Yutaka Yamada. And um, it's about Vikings mm. and Viking, like Norse, English war between all of those nations in Europe, Western mm-hmm. Europe. And uh, it's like, you know, pillaging and dark and war and blood and killing and, you know, all that sort of mm. stuff. And all of the music is super sad. And um, it's just like, I don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the two songs I have are Chill Rain mm. and End of the Prologue. Sure. So, this first season is 24 episodes. Uh, which I th- personally I think is the perfect length for an episode uh, season of a TV show, twenty two to twenty four, and um, they use these themes a lot. So it's a, a little bit different than Attack on Titan, where I picked specific songs. Chill Rain is used almost every episode, mm-hmm. but it's just like a lot of the songs in this show are just piano sure. in like an echoey room kind of feel. Mm-hmm. And um, it's very peaceful. Most of the show takes place in the winter, so there's a lot of snow. And uh, the first time you hear, hear Chill Rain is like you follow this girl as she's walking through the snow, kind of freezing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very like somber, but peaceful. Like you have this sort of serenity to it with just this solo piano being very like kind of sad I guess mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain it but besides sad yeah <laughs> but um it just it makes me feel things ah. and I enjoy those things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and it it makes me think of the show which also is incredibly good by yeah. the way um it just showed up on Netflix and season 2 was announced so that's nice go there watch go. that too um yeah, like I said, most of the songs are piano, so like Chill Rain, uh, there's a song called Dagger, uh, there's a song called Tenderness, those are piano only, and they're very beautiful pieces, mm. and then there's like a lot of percussive songs, and End of the Prologue, which is the last song you hear, kind of teases the second season, showcases the first season, um, in a beautiful way that I won't spoil because it ruins the entire show if you know what goes down. And uh, the song made me cry the Mm. first time I heard it, Um, which that doesn't happen a lot the first time Mm -hmm. I hear a song. Um, I didn't even cry to Endgame the first time I watched Mm -hmm. it, but I've cried every time since. Yeah. so there's that. But this one made me cry the first time I heard it. It was just a very powerful mm-hmm. moment. Um, and they bring in this theme. It's very it's like the first song in the whole soundtrack that's like a whole orchestra. Yeah. And it's very like suddenly you're like, Oh yeah. And it's yeah, so it it's a little overwhelming almost. Um I just really love it because mm-hmm. it it pulls it pulls you in to the end of the show, and you're like, no, don't be done. Yeah. And I've waited like three years for this second season now, so. Oh, wow. That's, that's annoying for me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Vinland Saga, you should watch that show, please. Okay. I'll there watch it go. with you. Sweet. My number four is Interstellar. <laughs> Oof. What a good movie. Yeah, it's great. Um, I'll say a few things, but I know it's, you know, it may, it may or may not show up later on your list, so I'll... I'll what? Yeah, we'll see, you know. If you have more to say what? later, you know, I'll let you say more. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, we've, we've talked about Interstellar before. Uh, we love the music in Interstellar. Hans Zimmer. Yes. Uh, probably, probably his best work, question mark? Um, I would say. I would say it's probably his best. Um, super like, you know, it's kind of a meme. Like it's like organs, you know, it's very yeah. organ heavy. Um, and I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's just perfect. like it's the the the. I think it's the perfect like science fiction 
score, right? Like mm. Dune and Blade Runner 2049 um, are very different type of science fiction and the scores are perfect for that type of like kind of elevated, a little bit more fantastical science fiction. Yeah. Um, Interstellar is, you know, as real life grounded as, you know, we can get with interstellar travel. Um, and I think the score is just so good. It fits like, it feels like a, like kind of like a old school science fiction vibe. And, um, Mm. the, I love like all the songs in the, in the movie, but, um, day one and stay are like a couple of my favorites. I love stay because it like, it's another, like it's a slow build and like it, it's just like, it starts out really quiet and like, uh, breathy and he uses like kind of wind sound Mm -hmm. and it just like, it builds and it's just sweeping and then it is like organs and then, eh, and it just like, it builds super (laughs) well when he's, he's, uh, he's leaving for space. Um, it's just so good. I love it so much. I think it's great. So that's all I'll say for now. <laughs> My number okay. four. Um, I'll talk about it when it comes up again. There you go. We'll just if it we'll does. just let it who's we'll to just say? let it sit. If it comes up, yes, of course. Um, my number three, rounding out the non movies mm-hmm. on my movie list here, uh, is Violet Evergarden by Evan Call. Oh. He does all of the music for this one, and um, so I have Never Coming Back and Across the Violet Sky. Um, I think this show, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this and it sounds like I'm joking because I've said this about other things. Um, and it, it kind of, it might contradict some opinions I have on other things, but when I think about this show, also on Netflix, you can watch it on Netflix, Mm. Violet Evergarden. Um, I think it is my favorite piece of art. In in terms of its collective, the animation, there is nothing on earth that looks as good as this show. And I and I will fight you on that. <laughs> there is nothing else that looks as good as this show, in my opinion. Um, shout out Kyoto Animation uh, for this show. They are insane. They are so good. This show is gorgeous. You watch the trailer, you cry. Um, this show is about a girl who was a soldier growing up, and she doesn't know how to live in the real world, mm-hmm. and someone who cared for her very deeply told her that they loved her. She doesn't know what that means, so it's about her um, writing love letters so she can learn what love is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And she writes all these beautiful letters, and she writes a movie at one point for people who can't write or read, and it literally, there's like three separate episodes with three separate stories, 20 minutes long. It's just, a, it's an anime, mm-hmm. the 20 minute episodes, three episodes in a row, three separate cries. Uh, <laughs> in, insane. Um... And Across the Violet Sky, and I'm here to say it again, (laughs) Across the Violet Sky is my favorite song. Oh, wow. There you go. There are are no other songs that I would pick before I pick this song. Okay. It, it, I I drove home from work yesterday, two days ago now already, and I put it on and I smiled (laughs) the whole time. Yeah. It's just like. Ah, uh, wow. Mm. I literally can't put it into words what this song means to me. There you go. Um, it's insanely good. And I think the show and anime in general, I'm just going to put it out there because, you know, for whatever reason, people don't like anime. I don't know. Um, I think this and most anime overall is undervalued and underrated and misunderstood. It's preaching. And I think that you should watch. All of these shows. There you go. And I'll probably make solo episodes on this channel talking about shows because be awesome. I love them yep. so much. So that's my spiel. You're, you're that's, well, me, thank you for listening to my you're TED Talk. Me hype for Violet Evergarden. I'm going to have to. You got to watch for, it, dude. Yeah. I'll watch it with okay. you. Okay.
It's so good. That sounds. It sounds good. Man. Okay. Got to follow it up. Three. My number three, uh, La La Land. Uh, is written. I haven't seen La La Land. You haven't seen it. Wow. You should watch no. it. It's great. I take um, great pride in having not seen. Oh it. come on! It's great. <laughs> Is there a reason you haven't seen it? Are you against La La Land? Are you morally against it? Uh, no. I just didn't see it when it yeah. was hype. And then I lived with two different people in college mm. who had La La Land posters. Yeah. And that at that point, I was just like, I was just like, it is I'm like, going to be that guy that never saw it. It is, I think it got a little bit too much hype. Because <laughs> like, it's, it's one of my, I should have put it on my honorable mentions of my favorite movies. It's one of my, one of my favorite movies. Um. Wow. But like, I don't know. It's interesting as a as like a musical. It's probably not as good as most other musicals. But like, hmm. the music itself, so the score written by Justin Hurwitz, is just amazing. I love it so much. Um, Justin Hurwitz also is the guy who wrote um, the score for Whiplash. We love Whiplash. Um, oh. I gotta see Whiplash. So that, that that oh you haven't watched it. That's right. I haven't seen Whiplash. Um that duo, the director Damien Chazelle and composer Justin Hurwitz both did Whiplash and La La Land. Um mm. uh two songs, Planetarium and Epilogue. Um Planetarium is very sweeping, orchestral. Um Epilogue has some of that and it also has some of the La La Land. La La Land is a very jazz heavy story and uh music wise. Um lots of jazz stuff which I love jazz music also. Mm. And you like jazz? I do. I like jazz. Um but yeah, I just I love I don't have a ton to say about La La Land honestly. Like it's just I really love the filmmaking of it. Um I was talking about this the other day with 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 a couple people um la la land and the greatest showman came out like around the same time and i hate the greatest showman Uh, i think it's i think it's garbage uh (laughs) and so the greatest la la land came out first and it won best picture but it also didn't win best picture uh (laughs) yeah and and then greatest showman came out a few months after that i think and there were a lot of people where that were like greatest showman is like the best thing ever and the greatest showman is like what la la land should have been and la la land's crap and the greatest showman is the best thing ever and i just are you referencing uh, pretty much it video no i don't know i haven't, I haven't seen that one actually oh um i they say basically the i same just thing. i definitely just hate the greatest showman uh for one of the one of the reasons is the music is fine but it's very like it's pop music it's very produced, auto-tuned, um, mm. that sort of thing. Which, if you like that, that's fine. But La La Land on the other end of the spectrum is very like the a lot of the songs, the singing. Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling are singing live in the room, and it's like they're not the best singers. They're just not like Ryan Gosling isn't the best singer in the world. But like I love it because it's super authentic. And it's like mm. recorded live, and Emma Stone has one song that is just like incredible, and like you can hear all the imperfections, which elevates the performance, in my opinion. Um, it's not overly produced and that sort of thing. And I think the music is just so it's just so good. I love La La Land. I'm a staunch defender yeah. of La La Land. I'm not against it. Yeah, I'm just never it going did, to see. There it. is some like it can. There are some people who. It can become pretentious, I guess. Oh. Yeah. I love it. Number I see. Three. Good, 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 you know, good for you. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I love that for there you. There you go. No, we're, we're going to okay, talk to um, Yes, powerful stuff. Uh, my number two is Interstellar. Wow. Uh, Interstellar. So we are going to talk about it more. Hans Zimmer yes. coming in. It's actually my only Hans Zimmer. Oh, no. Blade Runner. Never yeah. mind. Um. I have three different songs Ooh. from Interstellar than the ones that Jordan picked. Mm-hmm. I have Cornfield Chase, Mountains, and No Time for Caution. Great stuff. Um, so this is the only one I picked three for, um, but just because I couldn't choose two of mm-hmm. these three. 
uh, Cornfield Chase is like the main theme of this movie, yep. I would say. It's like the it's it's got a slow build to it, which I enjoy. Um, and Mountains and No Time for Caution are like Alfred Hitchcock level suspense. Yeah. Uh, like music, it adds to the suspense of those scenes, which are incredibly suspenseful, mm -hmm. which I love. So, um, and Hans is very good at melodies i like a good melody mm -hmm. um john williams is a master of melodies i would say yeah. um over randy newman personally i would say um I would agree. but yeah i remember i don't remember who i was watching it with but the second time i saw interstellar was in my in the loft room mm -hmm. across above the stairs there and we're sitting on the couch i'm watching it with like two of caitlin's friends or something and we're watching the movie, and I stood up in my house and was like, Get the airlock! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> and started yelling at my screen. It's just, ah, oh, it really is like, it gets me, mm -hmm. it gets me going, it gets me hyped. It is, they're bangers, dude. Those two mountains and yeah. No Time for Caution are just so good. So, I really Intense. like it. The horns coming in. Yeah, like I said, it's 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 mostly about the suspense it makes yeah. me feel, um, which I'm like kind of cynical about movies and like happy endings mm -hmm. and that sort of thing because I'm like, oh, it, yeah, it's all gonna work out in the end, right? So when a movie can actually make me think like maybe things aren't okay, yeah. that's when I really start to enjoy something. Mm -hmm. Um, just cause I actually can't predict whether or not things are going to work out. Um, so songs that are connected to those times in turn are also very important yes. and powerful for me. Mm -hmm. So there you have That's that awesome. more interstellar. We love, we interstellar. love interstellar. as you may have known from my list mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. first episode we did or the second episode we did top 10 movies. Interstellar is my favorite movie. So <laughs> it's not a shocker right. <laughs> that it's on this list. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. My number two, How to Train Your Dragon. What? John Powell. My favorite composer, I think. It's wow. hard to choose between him and John. But okay, so How to Train Your Dragon is... is between John and John. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I love How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, came out 2010. I saw it when I was 10 years old. Um, loved it. Seen it millions of times, probably. Probably not, actually. It's a pretty good movie. Um, the themes in How to Train Your Dragon are just so... In like, the music is ridiculously good. Like, it's almost too it's, good. It's too good, it's for, too this good for this animated movie, which... I think the How to Train Your Dragon is trilogy is like one of the one of the better like kids trilogies we've gotten in the past you know ten years. I've only seen the first. Oh one. man, you got, okay? Watch this. Watch the next ones. <laughs> uh, you might not like them as as much now as since we're adults, we're grown men. Maybe. Yeah. I watch plenty of children's. Yeah. I Miss Marvel's my favorite. That's true. MC show, <laughs> and it's TVPG. Yeah. So. Uh, but two tracks, Forbidden Friendship and Coming Back Around. Uh, Forbidden Friendship is the song where Hiccup and Toothless kind of meet for the first time and are like learning their uh, quirks and everything and becoming friends. Coming Back Around is like the, the final action sequence. Um, and I love John Powell uses a lot of um, choir vocal type things in his scores. Mm. And I really like some of the vocal moments um in those songs especially forbidden friendship there's a there's a section of forbidden friendship that's like a bunch of like mallet instruments like battling it out mm. and it's just like beautiful melody and it's really really gorgeous um those there are tons of great songs the the love theme is really good um that one's kind of basic First light or something like yeah, that test, i think it's test drive or something the the like, dun, 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 dun. that's like you know yeah. the iconic theme. Uh, it's it's all great. It's like it's probably 
like Star Trek and How to Train Your Dragon and Star Wars are like the main like movie scores that I've always like I, I feel like I've been listening to my whole life. Like when I was, you know, mm. nine, ten years old when I was started really getting into uh, movies and, and movie scores and that sort of thing. Those were like yeah, Star Wars, How to Train Your Dragon and like Star Trek were always in rotation. So super nostalgic. Um great stuff. So and here we've we've made it to our number ones, which to, 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 to shock no one. one. I mean, the most we said you said thing. we weren't allowed to put these movies on I, our list. When we were talking about this episode, I was just like, it would be too obvious to like talk about this the this movie series because like we've talked about it enough. Uh, but actually, we've only talked about it once. That's true. <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, it's our collective number one to no one's surprise is Star Wars. Wow. Look at that. And we're just going to cover all of them. Yeah. Um, Star Wars by John Williams. Big John. John doesn't miss. <laughs> he doesn't number miss. one. French horn lover. Mm. Um, the two songs that I picked are Princess Leia's theme and Yoda and the Force. Mm. Uh, Princess Leia's theme was my favorite song of all time before Across the Violet mm. Sky, before I had seen that. Um, it's just, a, oh, it's very powerful. Mm. The horns are strong, uh, which I like. And um, Carrie Fisher is an mm. uh, amazing mm. person. Yeah. So, and there's like a, a piccolo mm-hmm. solo. Mm-hmm. That is really, really nice in yeah. the middle of that song. We did so, that song. Something I can whistle to. I think we did that song my senior year of band, and it was just like... Really? So, it was so much fun. I loved it. When I was in band, we played like Bryce Canyon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We didn't really get to do a lot of we, movie we stuff. We played a bunch. We played We played Princess Leia's theme. We played some How to Train Your Dragon, some... I think we I think we played Skyfall, like the Adele song. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that sort of thing, so... Lord of the Rings we played. That's, that makes me that makes me jealous. Yeah. I wish I got cooler stuff to play. There's a and maybe I would still be playing. There's a video somewhere probably my parents have of our band when I was playing clarinet, we played a uh, a medley. That's the word I was looking for. The medley from mm. How to Train Your Dragon and it was like transcendent for me. But wow. Yeah. Star Wars, man. Princess Leia's theme. What was the other one? Uh, Yoda in the Force, oh, yes. which classic. is the moment that Yoda picks up the X-Wing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's my favorite movie moment. Mm. I talked about a lot of my favorite things yeah, ever. We have lots of favorites. And I think, I think music actually has a, a large influence mm-hmm. on these moments. But in terms of movies, um, Yoda proving Luke wrong... And talking about the Force, all of that stuff is, like, unreal mm. to me. I love it so much. And, and Yoda and the Force itself isn't something that I... I mean, I listen to it all the time, of course. But, like, it's, it's, it's a, a song from a specific moment and not a theme. Which I think, for me, Star Wars is more about the themes... Yeah. Than the specific moments, but this one instance, it's my favorite movie mm. moment. Uh, certainly, my favorite Star Wars moment, yeah. and it's just like oh, you didn't wow. like when he, uh, he, when Luke raises the X wing in Rise of Skywalker at the end as a Force ghost, and they play the Yoda and the uh, Force no. theme for no reason. <laughs> I you didn't um, like that. You didn't like that at all. I just about got up. That's and left, not your favorite honestly. movie moment of all time. No. <laughs> Uh, it's annoying that you even reminded me that that existed, um, as I've only seen it once. Yeah, they did that. Um, they played Yoda they really and the did. Force for a scene where Luke's Force ghost lifts an X-wing out of the water, and that sucks. <clears throat> I hate that. Yeah. So, but anyway, there's a good uh, thing. Yeah. To Star talk Wars about. is insane. Um, the French horn. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in, in several moments, I talked about it in Princess Leia's theme, in the finale to episode five, there is a French horn solo as we watch 
the Millennium Falcon fly off um, near a nebula or something. I'm not exactly sure what they're looking at. Um, that's one of the songs I learned to play on the French mm -hmm. horn. Um, it's beautiful, and I love it very much. Mm -hmm. So, I guess if I had to pick one Star Wars movie, I'd probably pick Episode Five. Mm. Uh, it also has Luke and Leia, I think, in it. That might be Episode. I think that's... Oh no, it is in Episode Five. Is it? I think it's. Um, Maybe it is also. When they're I'm in thinking the... of the moment in Return of the Jedi where they're talking in the Ewok Village. Yeah. Um, there's the... well, there's the moment when they're in the Millennium Falcon in that little yeah, cramped Maybe room. that's there too. I don't know. It might be playing there, but yeah, I'd probably pick episode five. Yeah, yeah. My so, Star Wars songs I picked Luke and Leia. I think Luke and Leia is a little bit underrated because it shows up. It doesn't show up a lot in Star Wars. Like it, it's only mm -hmm. a few times because it's the Luke and Leia theme. It shows up in the Rise of Skywalker when Lando is talking to his random, you know, this this other girl who may or may not be his daughter or like lover or something that's, you know, for no reason. <laughs> yeah. They they play it in that moment for literally no reason and that infuriates me. Um I love that Luke and Leia's theme, also Yoda's theme which comes in and, and Yoda and the Force and all that. Yeah. Um I also think Anakin's theme from The Phantom Menace is super underrated as well. Hmm. Uh give that a listen. Um I think it's, I think it's it, like, I just recently discovered it because like, I don't watch those movies super often, but I think that, you sure. know, the music from the prequels, I mean, the prequels obviously get, you know, a bad rap and there's, there's kind of a resurgence of prequel love, but I mean, nobody has ever said that the music in the prequels is bad. Like the, the music in right. the prequels is, John is carrying is those movies on his yeah, back. Yeah. There's so many. Anakin and Padme's love theme is amazing, and all of that stuff is is really yeah, good. Across the Stars, yeah. which is Incredible. a reference to uh, Romeo and Juliet, of oh. course, the star-crossed lovers. Yes. Um, fun little yeah word play there. But yeah, I think very good. Song. The reason, it, like, it's our number one. Like, I feel like it's you know the the music and the movies that I've seen the most in my life, and that that go back to you know. My days as a child. <laughs> and my days yawn when yes, a child I was. Of course. And yeah, I don't know. I don't think anybody's going to argue with us that it's our number one. So, I mean, it's mm. Star Wars has Battle great of the music. Heroes, Episode 3, yeah. Duel of the Fates, yeah. Across the Stars. There's even there's good stuff uh, in the sequels. The Throne too. Room, uh, Octo, yep. Canto Bite, um, March of the Resistance home, is even or really a new good. home. March of the Resistance, um, Kylo Ren's theme, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Ray's Jedi theme Steps, is good. Jedi Steps, yeah, Ray's theme. There's some stuff in Rise of Sky in the Rise of Skywalker album that I really like. Um, yeah, I think it's there's one called A New Home, mm -hmm. which is the song that plays when she buries the lightsabers on Ugh, Tatooine, yeah. which seems to be a theme. Uh, people like to bury lightsabers in Tatooine. Yeah. I'm not there's sure what that's about. A bunch of lightsabers in the sand um, in, there, in that planet. Yeah. But it's like this nice do 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 which I like. Yeah. So I like when Kylo Ren's theme switches to a major key when he becomes Ben Solo again. Like that's you know, that's filmmaking also. Yeah. So. Oh. One cool, like deep conspiracy theory uh -huh. thing about Star Wars music. Um before Ryan Johnson uh killed Snoke. And killed Star Wars. Or, sorry. That let me let me rephrase. Mm. I'm this is not about Ryan okay. Johnson. Before JJ Abrams ruined Snoke okay. <laughs> and turned him into the Emperor yes. or whatever, Snoke was definitely Plagueis. Really? In Ryan Johnson's oh, this is a theory. mind. Mm. This is a theory, yes. of course, but I believe it to my fullest being. Yes. Um because in episode three, there is a song called Darth Plagueis yes. that plays during the uh like weird star wars performance yep chancellor palpatine is telling the tragedy of darth plagueis to anakin mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. this like oh song very like dark quiet like low voice mm -hmm. guy singing this one note for a long time the first every time we see snoke in force awakens and last jedi that same song is playing yep it's called Snoke's theme or whatever else. 
but it's like the exact same thing. And you don't think that that was on purpose? <laughs> you don't think John was told, hey, we want this theme for this character to be the same as this theme for yeah, this character. I, I don't think. <laughs> because, they're the, because they're the same character. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if I buy it because we've talked about like, they're just putting music wherever in those movies because they don't care about themes or anything. So I would like to believe that that's true, but they, I don't also, I, uh, I don't really have faith I that think they that's uh, exactly what would happened. be that faithful. But I like that so. theory. I, I, in our head canon, I think that can be true, that he's... I'm happy with Plagueis. that. We just we just delete episode yeah. nine from our. We head should canon write. We should write a, it with, uh, a uh, episode nine revision. Um, I'd probably have to rewrite episode eight first. Probably, yeah. We you probably just have to start just, from scratch. Just, just Finn. <laughs> just Finn. Yes, for we sure. Just rewrite Finn. Take out Rose. Sorry, Kelly. Um, <laughs> dang, poor Kelly. Man. Yeah. Um. That that's anyway. We love um, Star Wars okay. music. Yeah, we love Star Wars. Everything about Star Wars is amazing. Yeah, is. Let's be honest. Even Kenobi. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe not. Okay, I like it. It's whatever. whatever. Um, what's next, Jordan? Uh, yeah, next week, uh, we'll be discussing Nope. So go see Nope is out today, Thursday, when we're recording this. You'll you won't hear it till Tuesday, but if you haven't seen Nope yet, go see Nope. We're gonna talk about it next Tuesday. Uh, it's gonna be fun. I had a great time recording this episode. I told Joshua that I was just so like, much fun, pumped to be talking about something that's not Disney or Star Wars or Marvel. It, we talked about Star Wars, but it's not something you know that makes me angry. So yeah, I'm just like I've been <laughs> I've been happy this entire episode, and I haven't been upset. So that's good. <laughs> that's really it's good. really good. So I had a I have always have a great time on this show. Thanks for yes. joining us. Thanks for listening and watching, mm-hmm. and you know, and being being here and sitting down and driving and standing up and however you're listening, Working and, and, you know. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. It's so, awesome. We'll see you guys next week. Yes. For Nope. Or Nope, yes. the movie. No. Nope. Yes. See you guys. Farewell. Bye.